connection that occurred to me last fall when we had a listening session. And I wanted to raise it to get your uh, perspective. You're listening to seven different groups already starts opening up the question. Correct. My sense is that one of the other issues in Catholicism is the sexual ethics that is simply mistaken. Right. I'll say that outright. Right. And until we start addressing human sexuality, with all the understanding that contemporary sexology has. Thank you. I'm so glad you asked that question. Mm. Very good. It is a seminal point. But here's the thing. We have guidelines for sexual education and ethics that have been established under the National Conference of Catholic Bishops that go back decades. Every diocesan director in this nation in the past should be still, have been formed in those. We constantly have conversations about when do we begin to train children around issues of human sexuality. Here's the problem with that. All these people think it's not about Jesus if we talk about sex. But of course we want to protect the unborn. You know, people don't know how they got here. You know, that might be part of why we have so many that, that get born that people didn't want or what happens to them. Do you follow me right now? I'm putting that lightly and in a cavalier fashion because that is probably one of the most, uh, let me be polite since you take this. Um, I can add ridiculous things we can possibly do. My dad was a bricklayer, and I was going to come out with one of his statements. Those of you who had parents who were steel sutters and so on, pipe fitters, you probably could imagine what I was going to call it. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, if you won't let us form people around human sexuality, because you have some misguided notion of what it means to be a conservative, God-fearing Roman Catholic, then that's where we have to start. Okay? Uh, we have to get away from being frightened about sex. Guess what? God invented it. The attraction <coughs> comes from God. It's part of our human inclinations. It's also the means by which we reproduce. And so part of it is we have to really be effective and efficient in allowing our catechetical leaders to form catechists in training young people and children around sexual responsibility. Why do we have a problem? You know, the biggest problem we have with abortion is the fact that people are being irresponsible with their sexuality and no one's calling on it. Yeah. I walked into a state university and, and you know, I, I informed my bishop that I was going to do this in case he wanted to, to do something. But you know, I, was a, I was a director in a state university working under the Office of Equal Opportunity. I was informed by some of the women on the campus that women of color who were very, very bright were leaving school because their boyfriends, who were not very bright, <laughs> were making certain that they got pregnant so they would drop out of school and come home and have children and be with them in their mechanics uh, store or wherever they were. So I was fine. I hooked up with the director of the Women's Studies Department, Women's Institute, not the Studies, but we have an Institute for Women on the campus. I brought in every public health nurse I could find in the area. I ran multiple seminars in my center, specifically for women, about every form of venereal disease you could possibly contract. That was the lowest pregnancy rate in the history of the university. <laughs> and the reason was, all of a sudden, these women start realizing that they have a right to control their own, who am I going to be with and how is that going to happen? And as a result, they were using condoms or they flat out weren't having sex because they didn't want to get AIDS and they didn't want all those ter dreadful diseases. So part of it is we have to educate people around responsibility. And we have to start, we can't wait until they're teenagers. We really do have to start as the rubrics of the Roman Catholic Church say in America, by the time they are 10 or 11 years old. And you will find a lot of niceties that violate that every day. So I agree with you about the sexual ethics, absolutely essential. Um, and I think when we have leadership that will not allow it, as in people under bishops, it's not the bishops, I just want to say this. All the time we have people say, well, the bishop won't allow it. That's a lot of bogusness. 
I had someone tell me that the bishop wouldn't allow Tom Groom to speak in the Archdiocese of Washington. It just so happens the night before I was with the bishop, the archbishop, and he said, you know, it's like your boss keeps saying, he, want, uh, he wants me to say Tom Groom can't come here. And he says, it's not my problem. He's speaking in Baltimore. I don't have to say anything about it. He didn't say anything about it. But our entire staff was told, the bishop says, and I told him, that's a lie. He told me last night. He didn't say anything about it. So, you know, we, we have these people who do bishop says stuff. I don't know that I ought, when people tell me the bishop said something, I have to see it in writing. I, I don't believe that. So when it's given as a mandate, if the bishop wants this to happen, he'll write it down and he'll have to read it in church. Otherwise, I don't believe you. And so part of our educating children, we start educating them. We start taking seriously the mandates of the Roman Catholic bishops of this nation. Those are, those are regulations for this country and putting them in force. And we start telling people, what's your fear about sex? Why be afraid of it? You know, um, if you're not having it, that's okay. If you are, do so responsibly. And make sure whoever it is is your partner and not someone else's. And that they choose for you. You with me right now? Well, I'm being light about this, but we do have an uptightness about sex. And, you know, I commented about religious women. Um, you know, part of, I can remember as a young religious is uh, having my local superior, who had also taught me in high school, and her sister was my classmate at St. Joseph's Academy, sit down with me after I took vows because it was the first time in my life, I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. She said, oh yeah, the kick's in about now. You've been under vows for about two months, yeah. Yeah, this is when you start to have sexual urges. Let me tell you how to handle that. And so we talked about it. Now, I didn't know what's going on. And so it's like, these are things you can do. By the way, the cold shower stuff, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> so I took up tennis. You know what I mean? So we have young priests that take up jogging. I mean, you have to find ways to redirect energies that you are not going to use in this fashion or in that way. I don't put myself in situations where I'm going to be with attractive men uh, alone. Why? Because I chose to do something else with my life. And so I mean, there are lots of things. Married women don't go hang out with the good old boys club that she used to hang with in college without her husband. You know, I mean, these are things, and the same thing with men. So I mean, there are ways we learn how to comport ourselves according to our vocation, and that's what we have to talk to people about. Are you with me? And I keep saying, are you with me? That's part of my being a black person who's trying to make sure that I'm on track and that you understand what I'm saying. <laughs>